We live in what many consider to be an unprecedented time of confusion and change in the church. Many people are waking up to the fact that the bishops, priests, cardinals, and yes, even popes that they admired suddenly during the present mess are not nearly the stalwart defenders of the faith and the rights of the church that they thought that they were. Many have woken up or are in the process of waking up to the fact that many of these men are more in love with the influence of their positions than they are with the church and the faith. It's a staggering realization to come to, but in the face of many parishes still being shuttered, and with the sacraments restricted, and with the faith taking a back seat to the happenings of the world, especially now as we move towards the most turbulent part of 2020, many of the faithful are being confronted with the reality. I've called it the ape of the church in the past, an edifice that has built itself upon the Catholic Church, calls itself the Catholic Church, but is in reality something else entirely. People are now confronting that reality and asking themselves what is going on, so today I say that it is time to prepare the, for the coming reality. In 1969, long before he became Pope Benedict XVI, then Father Joseph Ratzinger made a prediction about the post-Vatican II Catholic Church. Instead of a growing and dynamic church reaching all cultures, he envisioned a smaller and less influential church. Quoting Father Ratzinger, She will become small and will have to start afresh, more or less, from the beginning. She will no longer be able to inhabit many of the edifices she built in prosperity. As the number of her adherents diminishes, so it will lose many of her social privileges. Today, with priestly vocations and attendance in steady decline, Accompanied by an ongoing retreat from the moral and ethical debates of the day, even in this time of unparalleled darkness spreading in the culture, this statement has proved to be accurate, even prophetic. During our present situation, many predict that steady decline will enter free fall. With bishops in America and Europe imposing restrictions on distributing the Eucharist and celebrating Mass, many Catholics have stopped coming to Mass, some, no doubt, permanently. This can be seen with many parishes reopening only to see a small fraction of, the, of their members return. It was assumed a sign-up sheet would be necessary in many places to, respo, to respect in the imposed capacity limits, but this has not been necessary for many parishes that frequently only have a handful of their people attending Mass anyway. That is the state of the Novus Ordo now in many, many places. All too many places. Not everywhere, of course, but in many places. Perhaps in your parish community this is the situation, or maybe you're in a much healthier parish community. This state of the church has a concrete face, and that is the face of the world. It's not an easy thing to say or hear, but much of the edifice of the church has been subsumed by the values of the world, including the rather basic and most pernicious of values, material comfort, material security. We have an example of this. And it's an absurd example because it goes well beyond concerns that might be relevant to the faithful person seeking communion with Christ in a life of sanctity, which should be the goal of every Catholic, to have the faith, to live the faith, and to have the friendship of God. But our example gives us an inside view of this thinking that focuses on the material. From LifeSite News, we have this report, quote, Father Andrew Chan, pastor of St. Bartholomew Catholic Church in Miramar, Florida, has been preparing to increase the number of Masses upon his church reopening in June in order to, to prevent crowding. He was surprised to find much emptier pews than expected and instead had to cut Masses. He noted, quote, Normally, if people are eager to come to Mass, for example, when a hurricane is coming, they ask, Are you still having Masses? Now the question is, have you canceled the Mass? St. Gregory, the great Catholic church in Plantation, Florida, has recorded the attendance numbers that have been gradually increasing since church reopenings, but which still remain well below pre-affliction numbers. When they reopened the church for public masses this past June, they were at 25% of their March 2020 attendance numbers. That grew to 28% of ordinary attendance levels by July 4th and 31% by August 2nd, and mostly, quote, that's why it's not on the screen. I'm sure you've noticed this in your parish. I mean, after all, if you're listening to a podcast like this, chances are high that you are a regular Mass goer, a regular receiver of the sacraments, and a firm believer in the real presence of our blessed Lord in the Eucharist. Some of this is due to people continuing to feel the need to keep away from their parish until the current situation passes. Going on six months now of this, that's a serious position to take. Some have a dispensation from their bishop to do so, and again, they're not the ones I'm talking about here. 
Some of it appears almost like the prophesied sifting of the wheat from the chaff that our Lord told us of. This takes on many forms in the contemporary world, but at the heart of it is just how serious and important does the church think it is itself. We underestimate the effect that bad and goofy liturgy has on the minds and hearts of the lukewarm, but in some cases we hear many of them simply start coming to Mass because it doesn't look like the church takes what it's doing all that seriously. And if that's the case, then why should the simple layperson take it seriously either? An example of this comes from the headlines from about two weeks ago. You might have heard about this. This is a small story that's part of a larger issue. Headline from LifeSite. U.S. Archbishop threatens priests with suspensions who go over five minutes in homily. Five minutes. To give an essential lesson of the faith. Probably the only lesson of the faith that the main members of that parish will hear all week. Five minutes to prepare them for the reception of Christ in the Eucharist. This happened in the Archdiocese of Santa Fe, and it was done in the name of material safety. No word yet on the thoughts of the bishop or the uh, on the spiritual safety of his flock. The command from the bishop came from the warning of preaching faculties being removed from the priests if they don't comply. What good at a mass is a priest if he can't preach the gospel? How many Sunday masses have you gone to without a homily? If you're in the Novus Ordo, not many, most likely. In the traditional Latin mass, the daily low mass often has no homily, but on Sunday there is always a homily. That shouldn't be surprising. Basically, this is stating that the priest won't be saying Sunday Masses until he complies with the bishop on this issue. What does that say to the laity? Michael Hitchboard told LifeSite that what lies at the heart of the problem, or at least part of it, is this, quote, I, have a lot, I, I think a lot of what is happening has directly to do with just how available the priests make themselves to their congregation. Archbishop Wester of New Mexico just announced that priests who go over a five-minute sermon limit are going to have their faculty to preach removed. You have bishops who are actively attacking the priest's ability to have a connection with his congregants. It's a psychological problem where the congregation feels a disconnect with their priest and when they also feel a disconnect then with the church, end quote. And then what happens? What happens when the church in most of America and Europe goes along with the state without question? What happens when the laity sees this happening while other Christian groups are not just going along with the program? What message do you think that sends to the believer? The decline we had been seeing before our current situation was mostly a steady decline, aided by secularism and indifferentism. The present situation changed that. It ramped up the situation and the decline, with many not attending Mass for two months. Most of people admit that watching Mass on television or on the internet is not the same thing in the slightest to being present for the Holy Sacrifice. Yet many... They choose to remain on the couch on Sunday, and again, I'm not talking about the ones who have the dispensation from the bishop because of the present situation. I'm talking about the people who had secretly wished they could sleep in on Sundays and never really thought about why they were there on Sunday to begin with. The present situation has given them the opportunity to reassess, and many of them chose to sleep in. That's the reality, and it leaves us with smaller and poorer parishes. The church itself has two choices. To continue on the path that it is on, and has been on for decades, and all signs are that it will choose that option, or it can re-embrace its traditions. In the long run, it will choose the latter. But by then the church may be the tiny remnant predicted by Father Ratzinger in 1969. Little did he realize at the time that his own role in that council would help make his prophecy a reality. Recall that the rallying cry at the council was to open the windows of the church to the world which allowed that smoke of Satan to enter the church that Paul VI lamented only a short few years later. The smoke of Satan has clearly made many of our shepherds lose their senses, succumbing instead to the values of the world. We see it in numerous things, ranging from the now infamous homily given by Cardinal Supich this past Sunday in Chicago, to the work of James Martin in the church. Any way you cut it, these activities, combined with the church leadership not seeming to understand what priceless value the church has in society, has led to a rapid decline. But there is one place you don't see this at, traditional parishes, either where the traditional Latin Mass is offered or in the Eastern rites of the Church. In those places, the faith thrives. Yes, they have their problems, but the faith is there. And that is something for you to consider. Please pray for the Church. Thank you for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.